Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Stay tuned until the end for a special offer. Hello, dear friends. In today's video, I'll be working on this new oil painting portrait featuring a bold neon color palette. I'll also be chatting about my thoughts on the attitude of the art industry, inspired by recent events that occurred during my last week of art school. Real quick before I start, if you'd like to see a 60 minute tutorial of this piece with instructional voiceover, along with hundreds of hours of exclusive content and monthly art rewards, feel free to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash happy artist. Okay, so last week I wrapped up my first year at an academic realism atelier in Seattle. And let me give you all a little background info here. Uh, the atelier style of teaching art has been around for centuries. It originated in Europe, and it's not a typical art school environment that gives you a degree after four years and has a variety of different classes for you to take. The atelier model only focuses on the technical drawing and painting skills. There are no grades, no degrees, no exams. All we do is draw and paint for eight hours a day, five days a week, with a small class of students uh, who get more one-on-one -on -one attention from the teacher. When I was shopping around for different atelier programs, I picked this specific class because my teacher not only trains us in classical realism, but he also adds an extra portion of the curriculum focused on how to take all that realism knowledge and apply it to more creative, imaginative concepts. Many of the students in my class actually relocated to Seattle just to study under our teacher because so few, if any, ateliers in the world teach fantasy art. Our atelier is part of a larger art academy that contains many ateliers, each focused on different subjects. So while our atelier centers around classical realism, other ateliers teach still lifes, abstract art, anatomy, etc. As part of the end of year festivities, our studio hosted a critique day for all the graduating students throughout the school. We invited all the other ateliers to our studio and every graduating student presented their final body of work in front of a panel of judges to critique. The panel consisted of about six instructors, one from each atelier, plus a guest judge from the art industry who was not involved in our school. And let me just say, I was shocked at some of the comments that came out of that panel. Out of respect for the privacy of my classmates and teachers, I won't be naming any names. And it's also not my prerogative to call people out or direct any negativity towards anyone. But some of their sentiments echo the attitudes of the general art industry. And I just really needed to share my thoughts. Okay, now that all the disclaimers are out of the way, let me just get right to the point and relay some of their comments. The judges' attitudes were very positive when it came to critiquing art that had more realistic concepts, such as still life paintings of flowers or bowls of fruit, or realistic human portraits based on a live model, or paintings that use reference photos grounded in reality, such as a shot of someone's kitchen or a painting of a local Seattle street. For these pieces, the judges showered the students with praise and gave unbiased, helpful feedback on how they can improve certain technical aspects. But when it came time to critiquing the more fantasy and imaginative artworks, the judges were brutal. I do want to take a moment and clarify that the instructor from our atelier was very gracious and encouraging to everyone and didn't discriminate his feedback based on the subject matter of the artwork. One of the many reasons we are lucky to have him as our teacher. But the other instructors and our guest judge absolutely tore into one of the students who actually created my favorite collection of the day. He's a graduating student from our class, and I had watched him work so hard every day in class. He was always the first to arrive and the last to leave, and his work was absolutely phenomenal. All the students in our class looked up to him, and he was also a very kind soul who generously shared his knowledge, his art supplies, and his love of the craft. His collection featured the types of fantasy portraits and imaginative landscapes that I could only dream of painting. 
They were several feet tall, rendered to perfection, and full of beautiful, colorful motifs inspired by myths and lore. But the judges seemed to turn their noses up at his decision to paint these fantasy themes. I heard patronizing comments like, I usually don't like fantasy art because it borders on the illustrative, but it's nice to see that you applied your paint in a painterly way. Other comments criticized him for portraying the female body in a typical, quote-unquote, patriarchal white male gaze, even though the student had painted an art model that was booked for us by the school. And the model's pose in his painting was not at all sexual in nature. Across all the ateliers, it's a known fact that students have no say in picking the models for our projects. The school staff hires models and books them for each class every day. So why was the blame put on him? The guest judge, a young artist who makes modern 3D art, has never touched oils in his life. And he said, It's clear you love painting and telling stories, but I'm just curious why you felt the need to paint these. And immediately another instructor on the panel followed up with, I second that question. Why paint? Which to me was a dumbfounding question because how else would one depict a mythological goddess in a gravity-defying fantasy forest? And as these hurtful remarks came out, I glanced over at our class's teacher, and he was visibly frustrated and shaking his head. But before our teacher or the student could make a rebuttal, time was up and the event was over. I turned to my fellow classmates who had witnessed the whole thing, who also seemed displeased, and I asked them, Wait, did that just happen? Were they really that rude to our classmate? And one of the more senior students who had been around for a few years said, yeah, they do this to our class every year. They really dislike the fantasy stuff. Later, my teacher and other former students corroborated this and it was just so disheartening to hear. And even though prior to this year, I had only been exposed to the art world through my own little YouTube bubble, so to speak, I have heard many stories about art school's snobbiness uh, from my friends, my fellow YouTubers, and even in interviews with some of my favorite artists. And also from some of my current classmates and my teacher, who had all graduated from art school and decided to enroll in the atelier training afterwards because they said that art school doesn't really focus on teaching you how to paint and draw better. And I'm sure it's no surprise to many of you that art school typically looks down on fantasy art, preferring more edgier contemporary work that comments on current social issues or things like that. But I thought that this art academy, which is comprised of many traditional ateliers, would be different. Since the critique day consisted of only ateliers, I expected them to have a different attitude than typical art schools. I assumed they would be more open-minded towards fantasy oil paintings because, after all, the classical masters we all study from and look up to, such as Bouguereau, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, etc., all created fantasy oil paintings. Michelangelo didn't paint the creation of Adam or the Sistine Chapel purely from life. There wasn't a naked dude sitting on a rock outside reaching out for an old bearded guy levitating in the sky with dozens of cherubs and angels behind him. He had to use his imagination to stitch all of these realistic elements together to create a composition that was compelling, poignant, and inspired by myth. Just like what our class is taught to do. I guess I was just taken aback at how the judges of a quote-unquote fine art academy could still be so discriminative towards a style of painting that has such an important legacy in art history. I thought that since the educational methods of ateliers were so vastly different from the typical art school, that the attitudes within the ateliers would be different too. But after that day, it seemed like no matter where you look, the universal consensus on fantasy art is unwelcoming. I was so defeated after hearing those critiques because my classmate's style of art is the same as mine. In fact, I always say that he is my art goals. I started to wonder what would those judges think of my work when it 
came time for me to graduate. The entire essence of our class and all of our artistic preferences seemed to just be shunned by the rest of the school. So no matter how proficient our technical skills were, it seemed like they would never truly respect our work, just due to differing tastes in the theme of the work. While the judges were supportive and focused on technical critique with the other students, when it came to my classmate, they attacked his subject matter. It honestly made me want to leave this program and no longer give this art academy any more of my time or tuition money. But then I realized that my teacher, who had been putting up with this kind of snobby feedback for decades, he was still here, still fighting the good fight. And I saw the anger in my classmates' eyes turn into motivation. They don't want us painting fairies and mermaids and dragons. Let's paint even more fairies and mermaids and dragons. The more resistance against the type of art we love, the harder we have to push back. And I realized that this negative attitude wasn't a reason to leave. It was a reason to stay. And more than ever, I was super grateful to have this small platform online because through sharing my work on YouTube and Instagram, I'm hoping that I can show the world that it's okay to paint goddesses and mermaids and pretty butterflies. In fact, I have nothing against contemporary art or art that's rooted in reality. This past year, I've actually enjoyed painting still lifes or working from a live model. But I don't agree with the double standard when it comes to judging the value or meaningfulness of the work purely based on the theme. There should be room in the art community for everyone. If an artist worked hard to manifest an idea from their mind onto a canvas, then that art deserves respect, no matter what that idea entails. As long as that idea, of course, is not hurtful or hateful towards anyone. Similar to how we shouldn't judge other cultures' cuisine for being gross just because we weren't raised to eat those dishes, we shouldn't look down on art just because it's different from our taste. Anyway, I think I've rambled on long enough for now, and it's probably time for me to wrap this up. Thank you all, as always, for watching and letting me vent. You know, I, I try to stay objective and impartial on my channel as much as I can, but every now and then it's good to speak with conviction about something that matters to me. And I'm so grateful you all are listening. And I'm also curious to hear your stories. Have you ever encountered this type of negative attitude towards your art, whether it's in a school setting or in your personal life? And how did it make you feel? And what are some ways that we can help offset that attitude through our little online art community? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm so excited to engage in this discussion with you all further. If you're interested in adopting this neon girl, she's now available in my shop at happyd-artist.com. And if you want the piece at a huge discount, my never-ending sale is still going on in my shop. So if you'd like 20% off your order of prints and originals, just enter the code HOLIDAY at happyd-artist.com. And if you're interested in learning more about how to paint and draw, I have lots of art educational content on my Patreon page, including exclusive video tutorials, step-by-step -step photo tutorials, live streams, podcasts, and even surprise art gift boxes. All available at patreon.com slash happydartist. I'd love to have you join my Patreon family. I wanted to quickly thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video and for supporting my channel and the art community. I've actually enjoyed using Squarespace for four years now to build and host my online shop and website. So whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and visit squarespace.com slash happydartist for 10% off your first purchase. Also, if you want to check out more artworks, works in progress, and just random daily artist adventures, feel free to check out my Instagram and you can follow me at the handle at happydartist.